Whether you're a casual Google Sheets user or the literal glue that's holding the entire company together, here are 10 incredible tips that will change how you use Google Sheets. Let's get started. First up, instead of manually formatting raw data, we can now press Command and Control A to select the entire data set, right click, convert to table, and boom, neat and tidy. I can now rename this table to reference it in a formula, change the table color like so, and if I wanted to, I could click the drop down menu in this column header, add a column type, number, currency, since this column represents sales in US dollars. And if I want a shorter date, I could click here, add a column type, date, date instead of date time. And if I wanted to enable data validation in one go, I could just click this drop down, add a column type, drop down, change uh, true to green, false to red, click done. And there you go, nice and easy. And for some column types like dates, we can actually go back here, edit column type and select show placeholders so that when we add a new row by going all the way down here and clicking this plus icon, for example, we've added a placeholder that we could just double click and edit immediately. Pro tip, we can use an existing table template from Google by typing at table, enter, and selecting from one of the options here on the right. And for whatever reason, if you don't like this new tables feature, we can always go back here and click revert to unformatted data. By the way, if you enjoy learning practical tips, you might wanna join my newsletter to receive an insanely actionable Google Workspace tip every week, link down below. Tip number two, staying within the tables view in Google Sheets, let's say in this project tracker, I want to bucket these tasks based on the phase they're in. I can click this icon that looks like a calculator for whatever reason and create a group based on the phase column. And now I can clearly see how each phase is going. Alternatively, I can click the drop down in any of the column headers. For example, under owner, I can choose to group by this column. And now I've bucketed the tasks by different teams, customer support, engineering, events, et cetera. I can even save this view, uh, owner view, so that even when I exit out, I can quickly and easily get back to the view by clicking the calculator icon and clicking the owner view again. Pro tip, saving a grouped view also allows us to share this view specifically with our colleagues by sending them this URL. And this works the same way just as filtered views, which is what we're gonna talk about next. Google Sheets productivity tip number three is all about filters. First up, I'm willing to bet imaginary money that most of you did not know you could right click on a cell, filter by cell value to create a filtered view in just two clicks. Drop a like if you didn't know that. Next, if I were to select the entirety of column C, right click and create conditional formatting, whereby uh, if the value is greater than six, Let's make this yellow, um, click done. We can actually choose to filter by color, fill color, yellow color. And I'll show you how this comes into play in a real life example later on in this video. Pro tip, instead of using true or false as binary options, I highly recommend using checkboxes. For example, you can do this within the tables feature by editing column type, checkbox like so, or if you're not using tables, you can click an empty cell, insert checkbox like so. And we can now filter this column, filter by value, and let's say I select true, we can see that Google Sheets recognizes checked boxes as true and unchecked as false. And again, you'll see how this makes a difference later on in this video. Moving on, here are some data cleanup techniques everyone should know. Starting off nice and easy, let's say I have a column of full names. I can select the entire range like so. Command and control C to copy. And in the next column over, Command and Control Shift V to paste without formatting. Then with this range selected, go to Data, split text two columns here. And since the first and last names are uh, separated by a space, I can select Space. And now we have separated first and last names into two separate columns. Now, to make sure this data set doesn't include any duplicates, we can click in Command and Control A to select the entire data set, go to Data, data cleanup, 
and remove duplicates. And since this data set has a header row, as you can see here, we check this box, select remove duplicates, and we're told how many rows have been removed. Bumping this up a notch to confirm this column only consists of emails, we can use the is email function to return true or false. And we can select the entire uh, range down here, command or control D to paste the formula down. Similarly, to confirm this, uh, these are all indeed links, we can use is URL to return true or false here. And again, we can select the entire uh, range down here, command and control D. And as you can see, I've already added conditional formatting ahead of time to highlight all the true values. Now, as you can probably tell from the content that I make, I'm extremely easygoing and would never micromanage anyone, but just hypothetically speaking, if I were to double check my colleagues, I might use something like the count if formula and select the entire range down here and see how many false values there are, uh, how many mistakes were made, right? And I might even right click on the column header here and choose column stats just to double check. Ah, there are indeed two false values and uh, 43 true values just to make sure these numbers match up. And a really petty manager might even right click on the cell with the mistake, choose show edit history, just to check who was enough to make that mistake. But again, it's all hypothetical. I would never do this. What I would most definitely do in my day to day is to use the at command to insert files, events, and people into Google Sheets. For example, I could type at copy to insert this Google Slides presentation so that if the name of the file is updated, the changes are reflected here automatically. Similarly, I can type at to insert this event from my Google Calendar and at to insert the name of a colleague. Apart from just looking better than hyperlinks, this actually enables a super useful feature. When I select these cells, right click, I can now select data extraction and I can choose to extract the file name and the URL. Click extract and there you go. For the event chip, I can right click data extraction and extract the uh, meeting title and the URL of the calendar invitation. And for the people chips, I can right click data extraction, choose to extract the email and full name of the people. Although this is just a very simple example, hopefully you can see that this would save a massive amount of time if we were to extract hundreds or thousands of rows. Pro tip, from within Google Sheets, if we were to add names into two columns, for example, a list of reports and their corresponding manager, we can select the entire uh, table here, go to insert, go to uh, chart here, and under chart type, scroll all the way down to organizational chart, and click here to remove the header row. And now we have a dynamic org chart that we can easily make edits to. For example, Tim Cookie, there you go. And we can even choose to customize the color of this chart like so. Pro tip number two, you can type at today to insert today's dates or, and I bet most of you didn't know this, you can press command semicolon to achieve the same effect. Speaking of game changing shortcuts, here are three time savers I promise you'll use every single day. First up, if you type in sheets.new into your address bar, this opens up a new file. And after pasting in some data, instead of using your mouse, you can actually just use command and control arrow keys to move around. Command and control, right, down, left, and up. While pressing command and control, we can now hold shift, and this allows us to select cells across columns if we press the right arrow key. And if we press down, this allows us to select all these cells down across rows. This enables us to, for example, press command and control R to paste to the right, or command and control D to paste down. But let's undo that for now. Here's a real use case where I wanna find the percentage of this product sales against total sales. So here I would type equal this number divided by sum of this entire column. And remember, we can press Command and Control Shift D to select the entire range, right? Press uh, Function F4 to lock this range, close bracket. And then now go to the left, Command and Control Down, right, Command and Control Shift Up to select the entire range, Command D 
to paste that formula down. And instead of using my mouse to click format this as percent, I can press option forward slash to bring up the menu, type in percent like so, press enter, and this has been converted to percentages. And although that seemed slower than just using a mouse, I promise you, in full speed, when you get used to this, it's extremely quick. Next, let's bring several tips together and go through a real use case. Here, we have invited a list of clients to an event, and on the right is their corresponding account manager who's responsible for inviting them. And I want to highlight all the account managers who have yet to confirm their client's attendance in order to uh, shame them, which, <laughs> again, is a hypothetical. I would never do that. I would first highlight the list of account managers, command or control shift D to select the entire range, option forward slash, type in conditional formatting to bring up enter to bring up conditional formatting. And since we want to highlight the account managers based on the values in column J to the left, we want to under format rules, select custom formula is equals J4 because we want to start right here, right? J4 right here. If J4 equals false, meaning they haven't confirmed their client's attendance yet, we want to highlight their name in red so that they know they're in trouble. Click done. And once, for example, the account manager confirms their client, the color goes away. By the way, if you're someone who wants to become more organized in the workplace, you might wanna check out my Workspace Academy course where you'll learn a powerful workflow designed to eliminate mental and digital clutter. Link down below. Moving on, one of my favorite features to use at work is to select a cell or entire range you want your colleague to navigate to directly. Right-click, more cell actions, get link to this range or cell and sending them that link. As unfair as it sounds, going the extra mile like this drastically increases the chances of your colleagues taking action on your request. And if you're worried about them messing up other parts of your sheet, you can always right click on a column, view more column actions, protect range, select set permissions rather, uncheck everyone but yourself to restrict edit access to yourself only. Tip number nine is a formula that is surprisingly useful. If you ever find yourself needing to convert currencies in a semi real time basis, you can type equal, select the number you want to convert, times Google Finance, uh, open bracket, uh, quotation marks, uh, currency, uh, colon, and type in USD, which is the source currency you're converting from. Then type in, for example, Hong Kong dollars, which is the target currency you're converting to, uh, quotation marks, uh, close bracket, enter. And select all the way down, command and control D. And the Hong Kong dollars column here will be continuously updated, uh, just delayed by 20 minutes. And if you were to change the price uh, in the original US dollar column, for example, like so, the numbers will update automatically. Last but certainly not least is a trick I picked up from a strategy teammate years ago, and it's to bucket related tabs in Google Sheets using colors. For example, key info red and two related tabs here are in pink, blue, light blue, black, gray. And as you can see for the divider tabs, key info, sales, and working, all the columns have been deleted except for the first one to clearly indicate there is no content in this tab. If you enjoy these tips and tricks, check out my top productivity tips for Google Docs. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.